next speaker is Ujjal, who's going to talk about open source biology. Um, good morning, guys. Uh, I'm going to talk about open source biology and the uh, Ujjal's bio movement and uh, how that relates to people like you and me who exclusively sort of work in software. So who am I? Uh, my name is Ujjal Thakar. Uh, I'm 22. And I was part of GSOC for Ruby on Rails for 2013 and 14. And I just passed out last year. And I'm a synthetic biology enthusiast, besides what I do in computers. Uh, so I'll tell you a bit about the biotech culture and how that has been for the past couple of decades. It's pretty much opposite to what uh, sort of a culture we have here, right? So biotech is slow, close, and it's mostly proprietary. And this is a, one of the first things that I realized when I started working on biotech. Everything is just so slow. You know, I write some code, I can compile it and test it. If it's wrong, I can see where, where the error is. I can again compile it. When you, when you are doing biotech, you don't have that luxury. You do an experiment, it will take you about four hours, five hours, and after that you get to know whether you did something wrong or not. And if you did, then you have to start back again. Sometimes, if you have done everything correctly, even in spite of that, it fails. <laughs> so it's very frustrating. Uh, and the scientists that work in biotech are usually used to deal with observations and protocols. So when you're working in biotech, you have certain protocols which are like our algorithms, okay? You follow those steps. It's like recipes, like cooking something. You follow those steps, and then you wait, it, wait for it to cook. If it doesn't, too bad, you have to try again. So the do-it-yourself biology revolution that is sort of taking uh, that's sort of happening around the world, uh, largely in the US, UK, and uh, uh, some part in Germany, is about uh, biology being increasingly understood as some, as some sort of a software. So your DNA is sort of a hard disk which encodes instructions to reproduce organisms, as well as uh, the proteins that are actually, by the way, I, I should have asked this earlier. How many of you are here have a background in biology? Okay, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so biology is increasingly being understood as some sort of a software uh, that encodes for your body functions. Okay, uh, software that can actually produce its own hardware. Yes, so your DNA actually encodes everything it needs to know to reproduce organisms as well as to carry out your daily functions. Everything that happens in your body is encoded within your DNA. And it's sort of uh, interpreted in the same way that a Turing machine is. Not exactly the same way, it's pretty similar. So it's like a tape on which uh, a certain, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are certain molecular structures, all molecular machines that run around and uh, decode that and then transform that into proteins which actually result in the bodily functions that you have. <coughs> to the people who are working in biotech. And increasingly, a lot of people who have traditionally worked in computer science are uh, shifting to biotech. Like we have people here in the Fossetia uh, conference that have a background in biology. So what is free and open source biology? So more and more scientists are releasing their findings like genes and protein for free. So when scientists discover new genes or proteins that encode for a function in your body, they are increasingly putting that up you know, uh, the whole sequence on the internet for people to see and check out. This never used to happen earlier. So the mindset was that if I discover something, I'm going to protect it, I'm going to patent it, and I'm going to license it out to companies for a lot of money. People used to never share things. And that's changing now. So people are developing open source alternatives to proprietary biology software and hardware. If you look at any traditional biology lab, the kind of software that you see and the hardware there is, is completely commercialized. Nothing is free and nothing is open source. Everything that you see in a bio lab costs you money, including your software. And people are developing open source alternatives to that. And biologists, trust me, are seeing the value in adopting this. So they're trying to adopt open source alternative softwares for CAD and things like that more and more. So I'll tell you a couple of case studies about what's happening across the world in synthetic biology particularly. And then we'll go about how you can contribute to this revolution. So there's an open PCR machine project going on. And I'll tell you what that. Uh, 
So PCR basically stands for polymerase chain reaction, which is a technique to multiply DNA strands. Right? Uh, there's a project going on there where people are trying to produce a glowing plant, a plant that can actually glow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a genome compiler which is a software to actually sort of uh, uh, produce DNA sequences the same way that we have an ID to develop applications. And uh, last in the case study that I was involved in, uh, it's a cheap but effective handmade incubator. <coughs> so the Open PCR machine is a project that. Uh, what? <laughs> it's a lively talk. It's a lively oh, talk. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and we will cut hard and temper. Okay. Uh, it's a small size machine which will cost you about three forty nine dollars, which would otherwise in the market cost you four to ten thousand dollars. And they have a real time alternator that will cost you two, two to two point seven K, which actually costs you about thirty K in the market. And it's completely open. You have all the documentation you can, you know, build it yourself in your house. It has IKEA like build instructions. And I'm a little rush. And my remote is not working. And yeah, the software that uh, they support is also open source, so you can go and modify that and use it for free. The glowing plant project uh, is a plant that glows, but why? Uh, they're trying to develop trees that can light streets at night. It's sometime, it's there in the future, but it's something that they're trying to aim at. And uh, the maker kit is also open, so they give you all the ingredients, and you can actually produce that uh, seed, you can actually germinate those seeds yourself in your house and that costs you about $200. The genome compiler is a web-based software to design DNA and get it synthesized directly. It's a completely integrated environment. Uh, it, it's like genetic repository. It's like gather for genes with an ID to produce new genes. And it's working towards a complete programming platform for life. And the last case study is something that I was involved in this January. Uh, there was a workshop by MIT Media Labs, and I was part of the synthetic biology track. And our incubator, which was purchased from the US, worth some $80, sucked. It could not maintain the temperature. And we built one using styrofoam and cardboard, which would cost you less than a dollar, and it worked perfectly. We don't know why, but it's, it might be a case study in MIT soon. That's what I hear. And so the last slide is what can you do? Biology is becoming more and more open source, and they are taking cue from us, you and me, the guys who have taken this movement forward for the last 30 or 40 years. And we can show them the path by contributing to more biological software, creating more software that actually helps the biologists, and also understanding biology on our own. Uh, and we can help them understand the open source culture better and its benefits. Uh, and yeah, lastly, you can join this mailing list, which is the international mailing list for the movement. And you can learn more about biology, because this is sort of going to be the next revolution where people are going to program life instead of just software. So thank you and happy <coughs> <to you. laughs>